We try to be a good member species. My people, the Gren, have been working under the boot of the Galactic Confederacy for more than 300 cycles, and we have done our very best to bring prosperity to all of the member races. For context, the Galactic Confederacy is a long-standing association, which is the de facto ruling body for the known galaxy, and it has been for longer than my species has been a part of it. At the birth of the Galactic Confederacy, its main purpose was to protect all member species from any threat and or existential crisis that might appear on the galactic scene. This ideal, however, has gradually worn down, as the threats of old faded from memory, and more and more new species were added to the fold. The once noble, advanced elder races have held power over the Galactic Confederacy for as long as it existed, and, according to the historical records, for a brief time provided the only stability and protection in the hard and unregulated galaxy of the time. However, from Asian stability grew complacency, as the elder races began using their influence and power to grant themselves great boons and luxuries, which had been acceptable for a time, as most of the races who came after the elders understood that they had much well earned it. This, however, changed as the elders in their ecstasy grew ever more greedy, and they began demanding tributes from the newer races, who had recently joined the Confederacy. Soon enough, they were threatening these new races with economic devastation, or even whole-scale conquest, which they were able to get away with due to their sheer size and technological advantage. My people, the Gren, were one of the earlier parts of that particular group, so we managed to not be as extorted as some of the latter groups. However, they still condemned us to hard labour and unfavourable trade deals which shackled our entire civilization to one of the elder races. This had been going on unopposed for so long that no one was ever willing to stand up against or even acknowledge what was going on. That was until a race called Humanity was discovered. Based on biology alone, they were not remarkable at all, only being slightly above average in practically all measures, with the exception being their endurance, which was well beyond what most species are capable of. Their civilization was not much of interest either, with only an above average level of infighting and factionalization within their species, which, while rare, were certainly not unique among the myriad of races which walk among the halls of the Galactic Assembly. Perhaps the only thing interesting about humanity was the fact that they had clawed out of a rather empty region of space, which was nearly completely void of other species, and thus humanity had advanced more than the usual newcomer race. As the elder races began offering the usual extortionist deals and threats, everyone in the galaxy was surprised when the apes decided to decline every single one. Not only that, but they even voiced their disapproval of the kinds of deals which the Elder Races had attempted to force humanity into signing. This infuriated the Elder Races, who had offered the deals, and soon enough they had declared war on the Infant Human Federation, as they called themselves. Or rather, the Elder Races ordered their puppet species, which they had control over, to declare war on the humans. After all, the Elder Races were much too civilised to conduct something as barbaric as warfare. All us other puppet races, who had not been ordered to war, looked down at the human representative with pity, as the three different alien races handed their declarations of war at the same time. The human diplomats left quickly thereafter, once they read and reread the declarations, likely to warn the rest of their race about their impending doom, and possibly convince their leaders to offer surrender before they were exterminated. As the fleets of the puppet races, simply throw away ships with poorly trained draftees and the politically damned, jumped into the closest of human territories, they were expecting a half-assed planetary defence force, and maybe even a diplomatic ship that would try to convince them to stop. Not like they were going to, due to the strict orders from the elder races, to make an example of the upstart species. They were not expecting a fully-fledged human federation armada standing guard in opposition to the puppet fleets. The fleet's respective commanders simply shrugged this off, as their combined fleets still outnumbered the humans two to one, and along with their superior technology, the human fleet would be decimated. 
they were quickly proven wrong, as the human fleet fought with a ferocity of a great beast, and their ships would rather go out in a blaze of suicidal glory than surrender. All the while, the fleet battle went on, unnoticed by the alien fleet admirals. The last of the civilian ships were very quickly jumping away further into Federation territory, as military transports continuously landed onto the planet's surface. After nearly four hours of grueling space combat, the human armada fell back and jumped out of the system, which the puppet fleet admiral was gladly let them do, as they began licking their wounds. And what wounds they were! Nearly a third of the combined Elder Control fleets had been lost, or severely damaged during the battle, while the human forces had only lost a quarter of their original force. The admirals gulped in worry as the casualties finally finished rolling in, Surely the human ground force would be easier to take down, since they now had orbital superiority. It would surely be as simple as bombarding the few entrenched installations, and offering a chance to surrender in order to capture the planet. As it turned out, it would not be that easy. The puppet fleet ships took positions, and began firing off salvos at the defensive bases and other such fortifications on the planet's surface. However, they soon discovered that the humans defending there had installed orbital shielding which stopped the bombardment in its tracks. This meant that the installations would have to be cleared out the hard way, that being waves of ground troops, until the human fortresses crumbled to the ground. As the ground shuttles began descending down to the planet's surface, they were met with swarms of missiles and rockets which emanated from the orbital shielded cities and fortresses. Most of the projectiles were shot out of the sky by the point defence systems of the landers. However, a slim few made it past, and for every lander that was hit, another thousand soldiers died. The worst part is that the humans seemed to have a near endless supply of them, which they took advantage of by sending hundreds if not thousands of missiles at the landers, not caring if any hit and simply sending more if they did in fact not. Regardless of the waves of missiles, the commanders in charge had more than enough soldiers to throw at the problem, and soon enough alien troops were landing on every major continent with surprisingly little resistance. That was until soldiers from all across the planet began to stop reporting in. According to every ground commander across the globe, human forces would appear out of nowhere and slaughter entire squads of puppet soldiers before disappearing into the woodwork. The Elder Control Force attempted to combat this by sticking in groups, and not leaving their formations. However, this just made them easier targets, with the human artillery emplacements, which were located every single fortress and base. The puppet ground forces sustained significant casualties, before even assaulting their first major base, and it was dropping their morale significantly. The various fleet commanders up in space decided that a show of force was needed, and so they designated one of the larger defensive fortresses on the planet to be the focus for the attack, in order to show those pesky human partisans how futile it is to fight when the only end result is defeat. And so the three main alien armies gathered at the outskirts of the fortresses out of defences and began advancing. Along the way to the fortress itself, the advancing force had to fight through many an outpost and fortress, which were each a pain in its own right. However, they were eventually taken down, and soon enough, there was but one final push which needed to be made. And so, at the doorstep of the human fortress, the combined puppet force charged forward towards the fortress in an unstoppable wave, and were promptly met with a wall of fire from the defending humans. Puppet soldiers were cut down in swarms. However, soon enough, the unending torrent of new reinforcements eventually cracked through the plasteel walls of the fortress, where the fighting devolved into a bloody melee, which found both sides paying dearly. The last cries of every human officer and commander was to hold the bloody line, and they fought harder than any being had a right to. However, inevitably the human fortress fell, and the alien commanders, despite losing thousands of soldiers, claimed victory. That was until the human fleet, now fully replenished, repaired and even expanded, jumped into the system and began heading towards the puppet fleet at full speed. The three elder aligned commanders were shocked at the sudden appearance of the fully replenished human fleet, 
Given that it had only been a matter of months since the last fleet engagement, as it was unimaginable for such an underdeveloped race to replace their losses so swiftly. The fleet commanders in their panic ordered a retreat, as they began pulling their troops off the planet as quickly as they could. Puppet ground forces scrambled back to their landers in desperation, as human ground forces emerged from their hiding in the hills and fortresses, and began hounding the remaining alien troops all the way back. As the human fleet got within an hour's voyage away from the puppet fleet, the free fleet admiral's desperation took hold, and they ordered for their fleets to jump away from the system, even at the cost of leaving their sizable vanguard and the rest of their ground forces to the human's will. Any and all remaining puppet forces promptly surrendered, as the newly refurbished fleets of humanity arrived at the planet. The Elder Races were outraged by the failure of their puppet commanders, and probably executed them for cowardice, before ordering their replacements to begin amassing a new fleet to defend the Elder Races' territory from the barbaric humans' inevitable counterattack. That attack did not come immediately, however, and the fighting was at a standstill, as the new commanders were much too worried that the same thing that happened to their predecessors would happen to them if they went into human territory. Humanity did not make them wait too long, as their newly refurbished fleet had newly acquired reverse engineered weapons and shielding to boot. How they managed to reverse engineer technology decades, even centuries more advanced than their prior technological standpoint, I will never know, not that it mattered much. This new and upgraded human fleet charged into the territory of one of the free alien nations, which had declared war on them, and in a matter of weeks, they had completely taken over their first system, and were well on their way towards the next. What surprised the rest of us who were still watching from the sidelines, was the fact that during and after the conquest of the first system, the civilian populace was nearly entirely untouched. We had expected at least a few light massacres as a warning, however no such act was committed. What confused us even further was the fact that not long after the majority of the human fleet jumped out of the system, the local population began manufacturing their own ships, crewed by their own people in support of the Human Federation. That was until the first few messages began streaming in from the system, which were filled with stories of the humans aiding the locals in rebuilding their economy and making sure that every civilian acclimated well into the Human Federation. It was not long before the Elders branded the world as traitors to the Confederacy, and made them a public enemy. However, the seeds of doubt in their control were planted. Those seeds only flourished when the human fleet continued to tear system after system away from Elder Hands, all of which promptly broadcasted their support of the Federation, whilst encouraging other planets to do the same. And now, here I stand, representative of the Gren people, as we officially pledge our allegiance to the new Terran Federation, and fully announce our complete and total opposition against the Elder Race's tyrannical rule. Today we, the Gren people, will fight for the stability and protection of the galaxy, which the Elder Races failed to provide. And we will now do so at the side of our human allies.